All right, so we're now going to be moving on to the next chapter, chapter nine, and we're going to be doing two different sections in this one video, section 9A and 9E, and it's going to be all about factoring. And in 9A, they just talk about GCF, which is your greatest common factor. And in 9E, we are going to be talking about factoring basic trinomials. All right, so we're going to combine both of these into one video, and we'll work on both of these for the next couple of days. I am going to be giving you guys a handout that also goes over all of the steps that I'm going to show you on how to factor today. But it's very important that you take really good notes today and this entire chapter because this is all new to you. So this is going to be pretty challenging in the beginning. But once you guys go over and write down how I am asking you to solve each question, it's just going to be repeating this exact same thing over and over again. So once you get down the steps and procedures on how to factor it, it becomes really easy because it is very, very repetitive. All right. Um, and remember, I think I said this in class uh, before the test as well. Um, there are multiple ways that you guys can factor. This is not the only way that you can do it. Um, I am only going to show you this one way, though. I've learned in the past, the more times that I've shown them multiple ways of factoring, the more they got confused. And when we move on to the last section that we're going to cover in this chapter, where um, a certain number is not one, using the method I'm showing you now, in my opinion, is the easiest and best method. So, and it works for all different types of trinomials. So I'm going to show you it now so you're practicing it now, get into the good habits now, and then that way when it gets into the harder problems, you already have the methods and everything um, down pat, and it'll make those problems a lot easier. So I'm only going to show you the one way. If you would like to see different ways, then please come during lunch or after school or something so I can show you different ways. But I'm not going to show them on the board because I don't want to show three, four, or five different ways uh, and have people get confused. And some of the ways when you're factoring basic trinomials, they can't actually work when you're factoring trinomials where the A is not one. Um, so that's why I don't like showing the different ways. But if you want to see them, more than happy to help you with the different ways. All right, so the first thing uh, and our objectives is you're going to have to understand what factoring means. So when I say factor this or, or your book will say factorize, what does that mean? What does it mean to factor? All right, uh, today you will need to be able to factor out a GCF from any given problem. And GCF stands for greatest common factor. Um, and you'll also have to be able to factor a trinomial after today. All right, so one of the things that you guys should already know is you should know what the word factor is. Because if I said find the factors of eight, you should already know what that means. And when we say factor, we're saying what numbers multiply to give me this. So with eight, we have one, two, four, and eight are all factors of eight because one times eight gives me eight and two times four gives me eight. So when we're going through our problems today in this chapter and what you're going to be doing for a lot for the next few years, because factoring is very important. This is something that you guys have to have mastered. Um, is you just have to think about what numbers are being multiplied or what is being multiplied to give us this answer, right? The thing is, when you have numbers, you will have multiple factors at times, just like we do here. We just had four factors of eight. All of the problems that we're doing in this chapter and all the problems that you're going to factor in the future, there is only one possible solution. That is it. So there is no, oh, it can be one and eight or two and four. No, there is one answer and one answer only. So no one can have a variation with their answer. The person next to you and yourself must have the same factors. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's start practicing factoring um, with our GCF first. All right, so before we actually go into any problem where we're actually factoring, uh, I wanted to first give you a problem that you all know how to do. This is what we just got done doing. So it's good to see why that chapter four ties and is so important to this chapter nine. So in chapter four, the one that we just finished, we were distributing this four. We were, we were multiplying binomials. So we would distribute this in. We'd get 4x plus 8. Now... The way that the problem is going to be presented to you is this 4x plus 8. I will give you 4x plus 8 and say factor. And you have to figure out what did we do? What did we multiply to get to here? And you always have to factor them completely. And the very first step is looking and seeing every single time, do they have a GCF, which is a greatest common factor? And if it does, that needs to come out first. So what you do is you look at every single term individually and say, is there a number? that they share, a factor of a number that they share, or is there a variable that they share? So when I look here, I see I have 4x and I have 8. So the only thing I have in common between these two terms is the 4 and the 8. There's no variable in that second term. 
So then I need to ask myself, is there a factor that they share between four and eight? Well, the factors of four are one, two, and four. And the factors of eight, as we already did, are one, two, four, and eight. So when they have a common factor, you can highlight or circle them all. These are all common. And it's called the GCF, the greatest common factor. So the greatest number of all three of these is this four. So that tells me that is the number that I can pull out. That is the number that I can factor. So then I can write the four. And what you can do is you can just divide each term by that GCF, and that tells you what is left over. So I factor out the four. I know when I factor, I'm saying what is being multiplied, so I will have to put that parentheses. Well, this four and this four cancel, so I'm just left with the X in that term. And eight divided by four is two, so I'm left with X plus two. And if you look, that is exactly what we started with. Four times X plus two gave me four X plus eight. So when I factor four X plus eight, I must get four times X plus two. Right? That is just our GCF. That is the greatest common factor. We're going to go through a few, I think it's three questions that we're going to go through right now. All right? Every single problem you must start out thinking, is there a GCF? Can I factor out a GCF? All right? That is the most important thing. And once we get started into harder problems, it's the one that everyone always forgets. So we look at this and we say, okay, we have 12x and we have negative 16. So since there's no variable in both terms, I know that a variable is not a GCF. So then I look at my numbers, 12 and 16. And if you can figure out these factors off the top of your head, you don't need to write them out, but 1, 12, 2, 6, and 3, and 4. These are all factors of 12. And then 16, I have 1, 16, 2, 8, and 4. And now I look and see what are ones that they share? What are ones that, they, that, that are in common? So I see we don't ever really care about the ones because we, we will never factor out a 1. Um, but I see I have twos, I have fours, uh, and that's the only ones that are common. So then I look and see, well, what number is greater? Because that is our GCF greatest common factor, and four is our greatest common factor. So I will write a four here, and then I'm going to start writing my parentheses because I know when I factor, I am saying what numbers or what uh, binomials or what am I multiplying to get to this 12x minus 16. So I know I'm going to start by writing this parentheses. And then if you're not sure what is left over, you can just divide every single term by that GCF. So 12 divided by 4 gives me 3, so it is 3x. And 16 divided by 4 gives me 4, so 3x minus 4. The way that you can check your work, look at 3x and 4 and see, well, are there still any common factors between them? Because if there are, then that means you didn't take the greatest common factor. And then if there's not, so 3 and 4 don't have any common factors, if you want to check your work, to see if you're right, because you can always know if you're right or wrong on every single one of these questions, is you can distribute this back in. 12x minus 16, did you get back to the original answer? Yes. So there were no other common factors between this 3x and this 4. And when I multiplied, it gave me back my original number or problem. Therefore, I know that I am correct. All right? This is the first step. And this is honestly, this is the easiest part of this chapter. Um, so this is something that you guys will all be expected to be able to have done and mastered by the end of this class, this GCF, just this first part, all right? The second thing that you will learn in this video, uh, it will take you a few days to master, all right? The next problem I have is X squared plus X. So not every single time is your GCF going to be a number. Sometimes there will be a variable. So when I see a same variable in all of my terms, I have an X squared, I have an X I know I can at least factor out one of those variables because I see it presented in both terms. So what I do then is I look and see, well, what is my lowest power of all of my variables? So in this case, this power is one. So I know that my lowest power is this X to the first. So that is what my GCF, GCF would have to be. It's just that X to the first power or just X. And then if I wanna figure out what is left over, I can divide each one by X and I'm left with X squared divided by X, well, we know our powers, we subtract them, so it gives me X, and X divided by X is 1. And I can look here and see, are there any other common terms between X and 1? No. And if I multiplied X times X plus 1, does it give me X squared plus X? Yes, it does. So I know I did this right. All right, so sometimes it's not going to be numbers. Sometimes it'll be variables. All right, so when I look here, I see X to the fifth plus X cubed plus X squared. So once again, I don't see any numbers, so I know my GCF cannot be a number. But in each of these terms, I realize that there is an X in every single one. So then I look and see, well, what is my X 
variable with the lowest power, and that is this x squared. So that is going to be my GCF. And if I want to see what is left over, I just divide everything by this x squared. So x to the fifth divided by x squared is x cubed. x cubed divided by x squared is x, and x squared divided by x squared is 1. So that is my factored form. Right? That is the only factor form that we can have because nothing else can be taken out of x cubed plus x plus 1. So that is my, my uh, factored form of that problem. All right, now I look at this problem, 3x squared plus 6x. Now I notice I have numbers, 3 and 6. So 3, 6, my factors of 3 are 1 and 3. My factors of 6 are 1, 6, 2, and 3. So I see I have a GCF, and that is 3. So... I have a GCF with my numbers, and when I look, I also notice that I have a variable in both terms. So in some cases, your GCF will be both a number three and a variable, in this case, x, because our lowest power is x to the first. And then when we divide each one by 3x, we can see what it is that we have left over. So 3x squared divided by 3x, well, the 3s will cancel to 1, and x squared divided by x gives me x. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and the x's will cancel out. So I know that my factor form of this is 3x times x plus 2. There's nothing left here that can be factored. And if I distribute the 3x back in, I get to my original problem. All right, now this is the last rule that is going to be introduced for GCF. So not only when we're looking, are we looking to see does our x squared or do they have a variable in all terms or is there a number in every term, um, but this first term must be positive, right? This must be positive. So if it's not positive, right away I see it's negative, automatically I know I'm going to be able to factor out a negative sign because we want to make that positive. And in order for us to make a number, um, a negative number positive, we can either multiply or take out that negative sign and that will turn our number to be positive. So if this leading term with our highest degree or highest power is not positive and it's negative the, immediately i know i have to factor out a negative number then i can look at my two and six well factors of two are just one and two factors of six are one six two and three so i know i can factor out a two because there's a gcf between them i look and see well there's an x in both my terms so i take my lowest term and now in order to see what's left over i divide everything by that negative two x so now this will give me the negatives give me a positive. These twos cancel out. X squared divided by X is X. Positive divided by negative gives me a negative. Six divided by two is three, and these X's cancel. So my factored form is negative two X times X minus three, All right? So if that leading power is a negative number, you will always, 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 always factor out this negative sign. All right, now that is it for GCF. So we're gonna move on to the next part, which is a little bit harder. But like I said, it's all about following a pattern. All right, so the next thing is now going to be uh, where we will be factoring what are called trinomials. But before we get into that, let me show you how what we just got done doing um, relates to it. So what we just got done doing is multiplying these binomials. So we will get X times X, which is X squared. We will do x times 6, which is plus 6x. We will then do 1 times x, which is plus x. And we will do 1 times 6, which is plus 6. All right, then we will look for common terms and add those together. So we get x squared plus 7x plus 6. All right, what we will have to do now is when we get this trinomial, remember tri means 3, so a, a polynomial with 3 terms, and we're factoring it out, it's going to factor out into binomials. There is a certain procedure and steps that you will follow. But let's just look at what happened here. When we, the way that we got this 7x, it's because we added these two numbers together. So when we're looking at these num this number in the middle, we're always going to be asking ourselves, well, what number adds to this? And then the way that we got this number on the edge this positive 6, is because we multiplied our two constants together, this 1 times 6. So we're always going to be looking to see, well, what numbers multiply the, to this 6 and add to this 7? All right, but there is a certain format I'm going to have you draw it out in, and there is a certain steps that you will always follow. All right, all I want to do next is just talk about the different variations that can happen. 
and then we will go through and start solving some problems. So if we were multiplying this x and this, these binomials out, there are four different variations we can have with this x1 and x and 6. We can have where both of them are positive, where the 1 is positive to 6 is negative, or the 1 is negative to 6 is positive, or where both of them is negative. And if you notice, it kind of forms a pattern off to the side. So here, there are two cases where we have a positive number for our constant at the end. And in both of those cases, these signs are exactly the same. We have a positive, a positive, and a negative, and negative. So the only way I can multiply to give me a positive number is if both of the numbers are positive or both of the numbers are negative. Well, how do I know which one it is? How do I know if they're both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative? Well, if we look at this number in the middle that we're adding up to, if it's positive, then that means that both of those numbers that we we're adding had to be positive. So when we get a positive sign in front of our constant, it tells me that both my signs are the same. And when we have a positive number here, it tells me that they both had to be positive because it would be impossible for a negative one and negative six to multiply to positive six and add to positive seven. That just doesn't make sense. Here, when it was positive, when we see a negative sign in front, that means that both of them had to be negative because when they multiplied, they gave me a positive number and negative times negative does give me positive. And when we added them, it gave me a negative number. All right. When we see this minus sign in front of our constant, that tells me that my two signs had to be different because the only way I can multiply and get a negative number is if one of them is positive and one of them is negative. All right now, how do we know which sign goes in front of which number? Well, when this is negative here, that means that the larger number had to be negative because when we added them together, it remained a negative. So it's impossible for us to add two numbers together. I'm going to use a different color here because uh, that one was a little a little harder to see. So when we add them together, the larger number had to be negative. And here, when it multiplies to give us a negative number, how do we know which sign is which? Well, in this case, when, the large, when we added them together, the larger number was positive. All right, I am going to go through specific steps and procedures of how to solve this. I will play a song for you as well to try and help you remember how we're doing this. This is just going to take practice. It's going to take you doing this multiple, multiple times. So in class, Make sure you're following these steps. I will have uh, instructions printed out for you as well. But make sure you're following these. All right? It is very, very important that you understand these steps. And within these steps, you're going to be thinking about these signs like I just showed you here. All right. So when we do this and we want to factor this out, the first thing we do is we think about it in terms of our standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C. All right? And then the way that you do this is you draw a big X. Down here, you will write a multiplication sign, and here, you write an addition sign. And then what we do first is we multiply our A and our C. Or in our case here, we multiply the numbers that are in front of our x squared and the constant. So we put a multiplication sign, we then put a plus sign. So I multiply my A and my C. Well, the number in front of my x squared is 1, so I do 1 times 4. All right now, I will simplify. 1 times 4 is 4. And then this middle number just drops to where the plus sign is because we know that we have to add to this B. And we know we're trying to multiply to this C. That's why this is going where the multiplication is, and that's why this is going where the plus sign. So my B in this case is 5, so I will just drop this 5 down. All right now, we are asking ourselves, what numbers multiply to 4 and add to 5? So I can look right at all of your multiplication, 1, 4, and 2, and 2. Since I know that this is a positive number that I am multiplying to, I know that both my signs have to be the same. And since they're adding to a positive 5, I know that both of these numbers are going to be positive. And what numbers multiply to 4 and add to 5? Well, 1 times 4 gives me 4, and 1 plus 4 gives me 5. 2 times 2 gives me 4. 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Four, so it doesn't add up to that five. So it has to be one and it has to be four. All right now, this is the part. I'm just going to put um, N and N here to represent the numbers. This is the part that isn't necessarily mandatory now because this number is one. But once we start getting into the harder problems where the number is not one anymore, this step is the step that everyone always forgets. So it's something I want to stress now. We always take that and we put our A under both of these numbers. So I will put 1 over 1 and I will put 4 over 1. And if we can simplify the fraction, we simplify it. If we can't, we leave it as is. And this 
1 over 1, and I'm sorry, not 4. This 1 over 1 and this 4 over 1 actually give us our factored form. And now this is where I use this song to try and help you remember how we write this out as binomials. Right, so what I'm saying is we start from the bottom. So when we look at these fractions, whatever number is written on the bottom, we will write a parentheses and that's what gets multiplied to our x. So we start from the bottom, so it's 1x. And now we're here. We started from the bottom. Now we're at the top. That's what he's saying there. So now we're at the top. We're, we're Now we're here. We're, we're on top of the game. So now we will add because this is a positive 1, so we add the 1 to it. If it was a negative 1, we would subtract the 1 to it. Here we started from the bottom. Now we're here. So we start from the bottom. It's 1x. And now we're here with a positive 4, so it's plus 4. So we can rewrite it as 1x plus 1 uh, or 1x plus 4. Or you can just write it as x plus 1 times x plus 4. And if you want to check your work to see are you right, FOIL this out. And when you FOIL it out, you'll see that you get the correct answer. Right now, I completely understand that this is probably very foreign to you right now. You're probably not really understanding this. So it's important that you are writing this down. And when I go through this next example, maybe try it on your own first with your past notes or make sure you're paying attention and writing it out step by step. All right, so for this problem here, the first thing you do when you're factoring when you're using this method that I'm teaching you, if you want to learn a different method, all you have to do is ask. You put your X. You make your multiplication sign and you make your addition sign. Actually, let me put this underneath of it. I just didn't know if I was going to have space or not. All right, so you make your X. You make your multiplication and your addition sign. We multiply our A with our C. Well, our A is 1. Our C is negative 12. We multiply them and that gives me negative 12. And that goes where the multiplication sign is. The number in our B goes directly down where the plus sign is. So it's negative 1. That's what's in front of that X. All right. Remember, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. So whatever signs are in front of those numbers go with it. So now when I look at here, I see that I have a negative sign. So I know the only way I can multiply and get a negative number is if one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So then I write all my factors of 12. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, and 4. And I see, well, when I subtract these because I'm – I know one of them has to be negative. So when I subtract these, which one or which one of these have a difference of one? Well, 12 and one have a difference of 11, two and six have a difference of four, and three and four have a difference of one. So I know it's going to be three and four. This is what I mean by you only have one possible answer because there's only one set of these numbers that are going to work. All right, now I can put them anywhere I want, can I? No, this sign is negative. So that means I need to put the larger number with the negative. Let's just do it by mistake first. Let's do four and negative three here. Check your work. Four times negative three does give me negative 12, but four plus negative three gives me negative or gives me positive one. So I know I didn't match it up correctly. So that tells me, okay, all I have to do now is change the signs because I had the same number in the middle. And if I put three here and negative four here, three times negative four is negative 12 and three plus negative four is negative one. All right, and then this is a step that everyone forgets. You must, you must, you must divide by the A, so whatever number is in front of the X squared. It may not be that important now, but like I said, once we get into a section, uh, a couple of sections from now where that number is not going to be 1 anymore, then it is very important, and by forgetting it, you will get it completely wrong. All right, so now we started from the bottom. Now we're here. So this tells me it is 1X plus 3. We started from the bottom. Now my whole team here, so then it's 1X minus 4. So then our final answer could be x plus 3 times x minus 4. If you leave the ones in front of it, I don't care. I won't take all points for that. Um, but this is our factor form. We can check our work by multiplying it out. All right, there's just one more question I'm going to go through now, and I will go through a couple more in class um, because this is a very important steps and procedures. So I'll give you the notes that I'm printing out for you. Um, the step-by-step -step process of doing it, and we will go through a couple together, uh, or you'll try them on your own, and then we'll go through them together. All right, now we are combining the two things that we just did. Remember, the first thing we always look for is, is there a GCF? So when this number is not 1, we're hoping that there's a GCF, because when it's not 1, it's a little bit harder for us to do. So I can look at my numbers 3, 6, and 9, and I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, something should stand out to me right away. I know that 3 goes into all three of these, so 3 is going to be my GCF. So I can write 3 out front, 
And if I'm not sure what's left over, I can just divide everything by three and now I get X squared minus three X plus two. So now I have to factor out this. So I draw my X, I put the multiplication sign, I put the addition sign, I multiply my one and my C, so one times two gives me two. This middle number, this drops, so now I have negative three. So now I'm looking what numbers multiply to, to two and add up to three. Um, and since this is a positive number and this is negative, I know both of my signs have to be negative because in order for them to multiply to two and add up to a negative three, they both have to be negative. So the only factors of two are one and two. So this one's nice and easy when we're factoring because there's not multiple cases that we can use. All right, now remember we have to divide by our A and our A in this case is one, not three. It is one because we factored that three out. So we divide both of them by one. So now we started from the bottom, now we're here. So it's one X minus one. And we started from the bottom, now the whole class here. One X minus two. The one thing you cannot forget is this three that you factored out in the beginning must come down. All right, so you can write your answer like that or three times X minus one times X minus two. All right, I know I said that if the video was too long, I wasn't gonna make you watch it. But I do think that this is very important that you come into class with this understanding and this knowledge before. Um, it's going to help us go through this chapter. It's going to make it easier for you. If we wait to do all this until class, then it's going to make this a little bit harder because you won't have any foundation for it. All right. So you are going to have to watch this. I apologize for the length of it, but it's very important.